o'clock news starts right now. A national problem taking root in South Texas. According to UT Health San Antonio, Bear County had 125 opioid involved overdose deaths in 2020. Governor Greg Abbott says he will fight Mexican drug cartels to end fentanyl deaths. But deaths are quickly increasing all over the state of Texas, and they're being linked to fentanyl, leading the governor to issue an executive order and asking President Joe Biden to do the same. Alicia Barrera has more on why experts fear that this situation may only get worse. It's the fight against fentanyl. It's a drug often used to reduce pain for cancer patients. The same synthetic opioid being laced with counterfeit pills or other drugs leading to thousands of deaths. It is an opioid, a lot like heroin, a lot like morphine, and uh, except that it's significantly stronger, 50 to, uh, to 100 times stronger than those. Now, Governor Greg Abbott has signed an executive order classifying criminal organizations in Mexico, including the Sinaloa Cartel and Jalisco New Generation Cartel, as terrorists. The Texans are victimized by Mexican cartels that produce and import it. But experts say a statewide awareness campaign could be key to saving lives. Especially among young people or anyone that is recreationally using drugs, that there is a dangerous chemical on the street that could be in any one of those drugs, even if they look like medication. I will tell you that the average age of first use in Bear County is about 11 or 12 years old. The next step, Morin says, is being prepared with Narcan, the opioid reversal medication commonly carried by first responders. And it will completely reverse the overdose effects of, of an opiate, opioid being fentanyl, heroin, any of those kinds of drugs, and it will save lives. But people in Bear County can get Narcan for free thanks to UT Health San Antonio. And on KSAP.com, we've made it easy for you on how to request. And in just a couple of weeks, if you fill out this form, you'll receive two doses of the Narcan nasal spray, which could help save lives. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And new tonight, the Bear County Sheriff's Office announcing just over an hour ago an inmate died due to a quote medical episode. BCSO officials say around 2.30 this morning, 67-year-old Rogelio Hernandez was found unresponsive. Life-saving measures were performed, but he was pronounced dead just before 3 a.m. Hernandez booked five days ago on a misdemeanor theft charge. He was held on a $2,500 bond. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office will determine the final cause of death. A self storage facility on the southwest side dealing with several break ins over the last month and customers say that they're being kept in the dark by management. Now the latest burglary at the Otter storage facility near southwest loop 410 and Marbach Road happened last Sunday. San Antonio police say just two weeks ago about a dozen other units were broken into three burglaries in a month. One customer we talked with says the facility has not been keeping her informed about these break ins. I have a friend that has a storage here, and hers got broken into, and they took everything. They never informed me, so I have no idea, so I'm hoping my stuff is in there. SAPD figures there have been around 65 burglary-related calls to the storage facility in the last six months. It's unclear if they're individual break-ins or they stem from the same case. We called Otter Storage Facility Corporate Office. They did not comment on what's been going on there. And tonight, fire investigators looking into where flames broke out at a home this morning. They're trying to figure out what caused the fire that's left a family of four looking for another place to stay. It happened on a street called Taylor Run. It's not far from Loop 1604 and Redland Road. As Katrina Weber reports, fire crews made an unusual entry into that home. All eyes are on the garage of a home in the 18,500 block of Taylor Run. That area is where fire crews found flames and smoke when they arrived after 7.30 this morning. What they did not find were any people inside. They say the family of four, including two children already at school, had cleared out. Firefighters put out the fire quickly, but not before it did some damage. So most of the house, as far as fire damage, is unaffected, but there is some water damage from us putting the fire out. Still, they say the family won't be able to move back in right away. They estimate the damage at about $100,000. Firefighters tell us that all of the pets and people were able to make it out on their own before they arrived. But getting inside for them was a bit of a challenge. You can see right here how they had to go right through the garage door. It's hard for us to access it. The best way is from the outside. So we had to use our uh, heavy saw to cut the hole in the door. Investigators spent some time digging through the ashes inside that garage, trying to find out what started this fire. For now, they have no answers. 
Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A tragic end to a late night bike ride. A man died on the street after police say that he was hit by a driver who decided not to stop. SAPD says the victim was hit by that car last night in the 9100 block of Calabra Road near Westover Hills Boulevard. He died there at the scene. His identity has not been released yet. Police say when found, that driver will be charged with failure to stop and render aid. The San Antonio police officers trying to untangle the details of a cutting incident involving family members. Authorities called out to Aldama near Juanita Street last night after 1130. We're told two men, one in his 30s, the other in his 60s, got into some type of altercation. Both of them are injured. The younger man taken to the hospital with non life threatening wounds. Police say the other man fled the scene. The police department investigating, saying they aren't sure who's the victim and who's the suspect. SAPD now enlisting the help of Crime Stoppers and you to help find a gunman still on the loose accused of murder. Mark Isaiah Maldonado Jr. You see him on the left there. He was killed almost one week ago in what police may have been a road rage incident on West Commerce. Check out the picture of the gray car on the right side of your screen. Investigators say the driver of that car, a Hispanic man, along with a female passenger, began shooting at Maldonado, striking him multiple times. He died at the hospital. If you recognize the car or know anything about this murder, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-7876. Keep in mind, you can remain anonymous. Violent protests happening all across Russia just days after President Vladimir Putin announced a mobilization to put more Russian citizens on the front lines of the war. Putin's decision to mandate the enlistment of around 300,000 Russian citizens into the reserve military has people across Russia fleeing the country. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken condemned the Russian president at the United Nations Security Council meeting today to discuss the war in Ukraine. That President Putin picked this week, as most of the world gathers at the United Nations, to add fuel to the fire that he started, shows his utter contempt for the U.N. Charter, for the General Assembly, and for this council. More than 1,300 people have been detained across 38 Russian cities for taking part in anti-war protests, and some of those detainees have already been drafted into military service. Closely following what's happening in his home country of Ukraine is a scientist who's been working here for over a decade. He still has family and friends there, some of them fighting right on the front lines. He tells our Jesse Degollado that it's obvious to him that President Putin did not have a plan B. Russia's recent defeats at the hands of Ukrainian forces reclaiming previously occupied territories should come as no surprise as a Ukrainian-born scientist in San Antonio. The people who fight for their independence for centuries against Russia we find for 400 years. Yet now, he says Ukraine has made the most of the weapons it's been given by the U.S. Even so, as they say back home... We are ready to take this war as long as needed, but we shouldn't pass this war to our kids. A war that many Russians apparently want no part of, judging by the exodus of people trying to avoid being forced to join the fight in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin saying the prevailing winds of nuclear weapons can also blow in the direction of those threatening to use them against Russia drew this response by President Biden at the UN General Assembly. A nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. If it were, says Kowalski, the fate of Russia as a state will be done. The Ukrainian people, he says, remain determined, even more so now. Kowalski says Putin should have known from day one. When he decided to do invasion, it was first day of his defeat. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Check out Trans Guide at this hour. We are at I-37 and Hackberry, where... This line has just been growing longer. We checked it out at five o'clock. It's the exit from I-37 and uh, you know, you can tell that things are very slow going. This camera's at I-37 and at Hackberry. So we are looking north here as people try to get off I-37 and there's a slowdown. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Another picture of the outdoors there. We knew today was going to be hot. Questions about how hot we were going to get. Could we possibly hit that record? Because, hey, we have more chances. Unfortunately, yes. So we might as well take them <laughs> is what I'm saying. Let's check in with Adam Kasky at Red McCombs <laughs> Toyota. Yes, and we, we did not do it today. 
Today, we couldn't quite do it. We'll take a look at the Almanac data, the official high coming up in a little bit. And at 5 o'clock, we were outside. It was 96 degrees. A little more comfortable inside in the air conditioning. And some folks around here at Red, Red McCombs Toyota have been asking me, when's the fall-like weather going to come? I do think we'll have a little taste of it in the days ahead. I'll tell you what I mean about that and when we're going to feel a little taste of fall weather and an update on the tropics and that system that's headed toward the Gulf in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Still to come on the news at six, a program that helps children who have aged out of foster care find success. How it helped one young adult take control of her future. A community left high and dry a month and a half later and people living in the small town of Derby are still without water. We're pressing the water company for answers tonight on the night beat the state now offering insight during an investigation. And it's a story that's trending on KSAT.com. A well-known restaurant on Broadway in some hot water after shark fins were found in their freezer. But the people who work there say there's another side to the story. We hear from them tonight. And nearly two dozen violations lead to one failing score. The problems are behind the kitchen door at one restaurant. And the issue are cameras found there. It's tonight on the Night Beat at 10. For young adults who have aged out of the foster care system, there are so many challenges and finishing college is another one. According to the University of Chicago, that's why less than 3% of former foster youth get a college degree. Now three colleges in San Antonio are partnering with the Through Project to break down the biggest barrier to higher education, finding a place to live. KSAT's Camelia Juarez introduces us to a young adult taking control of her future. Michelle Carreos will do whatever it takes to make her dreams a reality. I plan on going to um, get my master's degree, so girl, I have to have it up there because they're really, really picky about that stuff. As a freshman and someone who aged out of the system, she was working full time, going to class full time and always looking for a place to sleep at night. But she made sure to find a place to study. Uh, I did it at IHOP at like two in the morning. I would like go and get the Wi-Fi from there or like maybe McDonald's sometimes. Like my first year of school was like very like all over the place. Her sophomore year was much better thanks to the support of the Through program. Carreos was placed in a dorm and as the program expanded to college students, she's one of 14 students living in a two bedroom apartment near campus. A&M San Antonio is one of three colleges partnering with the Through Project. UTSA and Alamo colleges are also part of it. I try and like picture myself now like taking like my senior level classes that I'm taking but like in the same situation and I'm like, I wouldn't be passing my classes the way that I am. To remain eligible, she has to keep in touch with her resource coordinator, save money and get good grades. But that's a given. I can focus on my school more. Uh, my GPA is like, you know what I mean? The only issue for organizers is finding the funds to help more former foster youth. The college program is funded entirely through donations. I would not be where I am if I didn't have like all these good people with me. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look from Sky 12, the Comal County Fair. It's up in action. Yeah, it is. Spinning, things are happening. Yep, in New Braunfels. <laughs> look at all the people. There, there must be a lot of people there. Look at the parking lot. Yeah, parking lot looks full, and uh, hopefully everybody's finding, I don't know, something cold to drink. Yeah, I was going to say the refreshment of their choice. <laughs> let's, go, go. let's go to Adam Kasky right now, who is made a very smart move and moved inside the showroom at Red McCombs. And you're talking about the drink of their choice. I've got the odor of my choice, that new car smell. Photographer Sal and I were just saying, you can't replicate this. You can't, just, you, once you lose it, it's gone. You can't get it back, but it's what I always do when I come to these showrooms. We're live at Red McCombs Toyota I-10 UTSA Boulevard. We like to come here you know, every year as a big thank you for sponsoring Thermometer Thursday and to wear the appropriate tie for the day. And Spreester, you mentioned we were uh, smart, smart by moving inside. Outside, it was 96. Inside, I'll take the air conditioned 74. Thank you very much. And, you know, I, we knew we could make a run at the record today or even, you know, 100 degrees. We fell a few degrees shy. I thought we made it up to 97 earlier, but let's take a look at the Almanac data. And the new official statement for the Weather Service is 96 for the high temperature. So 
Far cry from triple digits in the all and tying the all time record for 100 degree days in a given year. Record high 101. Uh, tomorrow, the record high is 99, and we have a better shot of maybe tying that. You look across the state, though, and what really stands out is the panhandle. And you look at Amarillo, high temperature today in the 70s, and that's their current reading. It's because of a little cold front. When we talked about yesterday evening, that moved southward and provided some much cooler air to parts of the plains. We're talking the panhandle of Texas, much of Oklahoma. Kansas was in the 50s and 60s this afternoon with sunshine. So there is some fall-like air out there. It's just not making it here quite yet. Waco made it up to 101 today and temperatures right now pretty close to the afternoon highs. We're well into the 90s all across our area. Dew points have dropped quite a bit. That's the nice thing. Dew points 40s and 50s. Drier air aloft and mixes down and that keeps us from having any big heat indices or any you know heat index feels like temperature issues out there okay let's take a look at our dew point trend this is important i said earlier we'll have a taste of some fall like air take a look at this full screen get the big picture of what we're expecting in terms of the dew point in the days ahead notice how it rises a little bit this weekend but by next week after that cool front moves through on monday we're talking dew points down in the 40s. That is very dry air and something we haven't experienced in quite some time here. And not only does that you know, give us that comfort level, but it also allows our temperature to cool off even more at night and in the early morning. So I think we'll have some morning temperatures in the low 60s by next week. That's something you're going to notice for sure. It'll be a little taste, a little sliver of uh, fall. All right, let's take a look at the tropics. I really want to focus on that 90% chance of development down there that's moving into the Caribbean. Uh, look at the computer models, and that's headed pretty much west-northwestward. Pretty tightly packed through Monday into the Caribbean that emerges into the Gulf, probably somewhere in the central or eastern Gulf of Mexico. That's something, of course, we need to monitor. Uh, I think it's more of a threat for anybody east of Louisiana, but of course, it's still very early in the game. We don't even have good measurements of this system yet. It hasn't even fully developed into something yet, so it's hard to predict something that you can't even measure yet. So we'll keep you updated. It's something we'll check back in on very frequently. As for this evening, 88 at 8 o'clock by 10 o'clock, 82. Midnight, we're 78. Calm wind, increasing humidity overnight as well. 72 to start the day tomorrow. 99 the high temperature. And that would tie the record for the day. And low humidity again for tomorrow afternoon. Look across our area, New Braunfels, Seguin, Gonzales, probably briefly hitting 100 tomorrow. Mid-90s for highs this weekend. More noticeable humidity then. Weak cool front moves through on Monday. And behind that, very low humidity, stable air, a lot of sunshine. And look at that. Wednesday morning, 63 degrees. That's going to feel much, much better outside. And at least prep us be a little appetizer for fall coming up next half hour we'll talk to blake george the gm around here and we'll talk about um you know inventory and uh you know delays shortages of parts stuff that uh, has been on a lot of people's minds for quite some time we'll see you then yeah, I'm curious about all those things. Yeah, did you see that uh, tailgate mm -hmm. reveal of the thermometers at the start? I know, of the they had like a little foot thing came out. That Man. was pretty slick. Fancy. <laughs> He's going to want to bring one of those back with him. <laughs> all right, this Sunday for the Cowboys, redemption was spelled B-R-E-T-T, -T, Larry. Brett Maher, absolutely. His third go around with the Dallas Cowboys and he came through big time with that 50-yarder to help the Cowboys beat the Bengals. So can he carry that forward into the game with the Giants coming up? Plus, right here in town, UTSA's uh, Frankie Martinez out of East Central is going to start at right tackle. How cool is that? Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will face the New York Giants Monday night in their first NFC East game this season. The Giants are 2-0 and tied with the Eagles for first place in the NFC East, while the Cowboys are 1-1 and tied with the Washington Commanders. Kicker Brett Maher, who booted a 50-yard game winner versus the Bengals Sunday night, was asked if he can carry that over to the G-men. No, I don't think there can be a lot of carryover, um, especially in this business and our position in particular. Um, just uh, getting back to focusing on what I need to do for the week to get ready for Monday night. 
According to reports, the boys signed wide receiver Dennis Houston to the practice squad after he cleared waivers. They waived him on Tuesday. The Houston Texans have scored just 29 points in their first two games this season, and they haven't scored in the fourth quarter at all while getting outscored in the final frame 27-0. Still, wide receiver Brandon Cooks is encouraged by what he's seen the offense do. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, like I said, I think early on, you know, we, we do a great job of moving the ball and, and uh, you know, having those details correctly. So I'm definitely encouraged in that aspect. But um, it's time to kind of take that next step to be able to, you know, you know turn these L's into to W's, really. Starting quarterback Davis Mills is dealing with a right thumb injury, but has been a full participant in practice this week. Due to several injuries to so the big guys up front, UTSA sophomore offensive lineman Frankie Martinez is getting some playing time. The walk on from East Central High School is set to start Saturday at right tackle when the Roadrunners host Texas Southern at 2.30 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. It's a big opportunity. It means a lot, you know, I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, just go out there and do what the coaches had me do all week. Frankie played Saturday at UT and said he had a good time and that it was a good experience. The BGC road trip will start in Charlotte tomorrow night where the Trojans are 4-0 this season, led by first-year head coach Ben Jacobs. The Trojans are getting ready to face 4-0 Sabinal in the district opener for both sides. For more conditioning this season, the coach's old-school mentality, the Trojans are all in. Oh, well, that's real good because most people just, they don't listen to, like, regularly just, like, being told what to do. So when you get on them, that's what makes them go. Last year we didn't do too much conditioning. We were very out of shape. This year we've been lasting long all the way, all four quarters we've been going. Coach Jacobs said his staff coaches hard, but they love the kids even harder. The Davenport volleyball team is rolling this year in just their second season of varsity competition. The Wolves are 4-0 in District 27-4A and 26-4 and overall, and they won nine straight games. That includes Tuesday night's sweep of Canyon Lake. Junior outside hitter Talon Dotson is a big reason for Davenport's success, and she says there's something special about this team. Our chemistry this year is so strong. It is nothing I've like ever felt on a team. Our coach is great. It's so much fun to play with each other. I think we all just really enjoy playing volleyball. And we're just going to keep going. We're going to try and stay undefeated throughout the whole district. We want to get first and finish out this last round and go next round undefeated. The Wolves travel to Fredericksburg Friday at 5 p.m. Hot team. <laughs> yeah. I was going to make a joke there, but I decided yeah. not to. Yeah. Larry, and he I think it's probably. Shared it with me. It's wise. probably good. Yeah. You're the, not the missing look, anything. The look oh. she gave me, I was. Oh. It's not that good, Myra? No. no okay. I'll tell you no, during the not. break. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back with Sheriff Javier Salazar to talk about his investigation into those migrant flights that are originating in San Antonio right after the break. It is a flight of migrants that left from San Antonio and ended up at Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, paid for apparently by the state of Florida. So why is the Bear County Sheriff involved? Well, because there might have been some deception involved. Sheriff Javier Salazar joins us now, Bear County Sheriff. Sheriff, I appreciate the time. There are some who say, why are you investigating this? And I also want to point out that this is not a sheriff versus DeSantis showdown. No, yeah, this has been kind of billed as a sheriff versus governor battle royale. And it's, you know, that's not what it is. I think we're it's a stretch to say we're investigating the governor. What we're investigating uh, as a result of this of these flights is what happened in Bear County and was it illegal? Um, you know, by people in Bear County with boots on the ground here. That's all we're looking at. Is there something specific when it comes to state statute law in particular that you were looking at to see, all right, was there a violation of X, Y, and Z that's on the books in Texas? Sure, sure. We're looking at different statutes to, to determine. First off, we need to talk directly to these victims. Right now, their communication has been through their attorneys. Um, and, you know, we know what the attorneys are telling us, but still we have to hear it directly from the people or else, you know, we can't really proceed beyond that. So right now we're working through the logistics of talking to those people. The problem is they're in, they're on the East coast right now and we're in Texas. And so we're working through the logistics. Do we talk to them through zoom? Do we accept written affidavits? Do we physically send somebody over there at this point? We're just trying to work through all of that to get a more complete picture of what are the claims being made and is it illegal in the state of Texas, namely Bear County? 
in your experience and in your talks with some of these victims or through their attorneys, was deception involved, in your opinion, in getting these migrants on these flights? Well, that's the claim. I think I think that's the absolute claim is that there was deception in, involved. Now, whether that crosses the line over into the illegal, well, that's why we have investigations, right? Uh, otherwise, we, you know, we think these things would move a lot quicker. But, you know, distasteful, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, dece de deceitful, absolutely. I, I think so. Uh, I, I think there's some, there's some integrity issues if that's the case. But does it cross the line over into illegal? We, we've got to talk to these folks first to make that determination. There's so much out there, Sheriff. There's some rumors <laughs> out there yeah. that, that, you know, they were promised X, Y, and Z. They thought they were going to Boston. Some of them may have thought they were going to Washington, D.C. And a mystery woman named Perla. Is, is that something that is actually true? Are you looking for a woman named Perla? Have you found a woman named Perla? I mean, it, it, there's just so much that's out there that I, I want to try to cut through that and, and separate the fact from the fiction. Well, look, you can you we, we can't name any names in this because because the fact is we don't know, you know, that 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 a crime has been committed yet. So we can't name any suspects. We have some people tentatively identified that are persons of interest. Uh, we've got some people that all we have of them is a picture um, and no name. And so at some point we may be making a, a public appeal for those names. But again, we need to talk to these folks first and determine was there a crime even committed in Bear County? I can't do anything about what was done in Florida. I can't do anything about what was done in New England. I can't do anything really that on transit. Uh, just was there a crime committed by people with feet on the ground here in Bear County? You know that media across the country has been talking about this. I mean, Stephen Colbert was talking about you last night. So, <laughs> but talk about what the the reception or you know the the feedback you have been getting, your office or either you personally, in response to announcing this criminal investigation. I mean, we've gotten you know everything from you know praise to condemnation. You know, uh, but we had we can't allow too much of the public sentiment, the noise to, to affect the way we do our job. we got a job to do. If somebody comes to us with a criminal allegation that happened, that, that was alleged to have happened in our county, we've got to investigate it. Every case is going to make 50% of the people really, really happy, and it's going to infuriate the other 50%. And, and it never really matters where, what you decide or what the outcome is. Somebody's always going to be unhappy with it. And, and we just have a job to do as first responders. That's what we do. Have threats been made against you and your deputies? I mean, yes, I, I don't I don't think it's anything actionable, anything that's got me too terribly worried about it. You know, it's concerning that people feel like something that they saw in the news makes them want to uh, anonymously email a uh, elected official halfway across the country, probably threatening all kinds of unspeakable acts. Um, but again, if you're if you're that afraid of threats, then maybe you shouldn't be in law enforcement. So, you know, you, you some of them, you got to laugh them off. Some of them, you got to take them a little more seriously than others. But, you know, let's just be respectful of each other. Did you expect this kind of attention? New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, Stephen Colbert's monologue. I mean, did you expect that when you <laughs> took this on that you were going to get this kind of national attention? I mean, look, every case that we work has the potential to, to get to garner major attention. So you just got to make sure that you work it you know, work it by the numbers and not get too distracted by all the noise. That's why in this case here, we're, we've made it very clear what the, what's there and what might not be there um, and, and what we're trying to accomplish by it. Uh, you know, so, so yeah, absolutely. We know that there's always going to be a lot of eyes watching. Everything that we do now gathers, uh, you know, the potential for national attention. Like I've told, uh, like I tell all of our cadets, you know, an, a police incident such as an officer-involved shooting, um, years ago would not have been made the news even anywhere outside our local circle. Now an officer involved incident uh, becomes national news in a matter of minutes because of social media. So yeah, we're absolutely used to being under the world's microscope no matter what we do. How about a timeline on this investigation? You talk about some of the challenges with these folks not being here in Bear County. Uh, do you have in your mind sort of a roadmap for where this is going right now? I don't. I mean, look, we've got to get the, the most expedient and most efficient way to talk to these people. Look, the affidavits that I've seen were translated to English. I, I know that the, a lot of these people don't speak English. So I, I got to think that something's got to be lost in translation. That's why I want 
my Spanish speaking investigators to talk to these people firsthand to, to say what exactly were you lied about and, and at what point? Because if they tell me they were lied to, but it happened in Florida, I can't help them with that. As much as I'd love to and as distasteful as I think it might be, I can't help them with that. So we have to really get down to the to the brass tacks and find out what exactly happened and where. And was it a criminal offense? We've got about 15 seconds left. Are you concerned because there's already a lawsuit that's been filed that some of these victims are not going to talk to you because of that lawsuit? Oh, absolutely. That's always that's always a, a, a possibility. But we've just got to take the facts that are presented to us. If somebody says I was wrong, but I don't want to talk to you about it, then we can't help them at that point. And, and you know, that's just the way it is. Jared Favlier Salazar, appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Be safe. You as well. We'll be right back. Alex Jones taking the stand today in a trial to determine how much he and his company will have to pay Sandy Hook victims for defamation. During his testimony, Jones admitted he called Judge Barbara Bellis a tyrant and that his trial is being held in a kangaroo court. Bellis told Jones there were some issues he cannot testify about due to agreements between lawyers from both sides. If Jones violates Bellis, Bellis's orders, Bellis said she will hold him in contempt of court. Mortgage rates are the highest they've been since 2008. According to Freddie Mac, they've been climbing for more than a month now, now hitting 6.29%. Put that in perspective, it was 2.88% this time last year. Recession fears have been making rates more volatile in the face of yet another rate hike from the Federal Reserve and its ongoing fight against inflation. Because of higher rates, home prices have started to soften. Sales have decreased, but there's still a shortage of available homes for sale. All right, it was a hot one today and the humidity did not help anything. We take a live look outside at live cam as we look towards the airport. Adam Kasky joins us live from Toyota. Red McCombs Toyota. Yes, and coming up soon, we're gonna talk about a little fall appetizer that's on the way along with the latest development that's moving through the Caribbean right now. It's likely to head to the Gulf of Mexico. We'll take a look at the computer models in just a bit. It is once again all about the heat this week, but luckily it's also a day to talk about thermometers. So that's convenient. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> too much has been all about the heat. Too many days of all about the heat. Yep. <laughs> I know, and at least we've been able to measure it accurately with the homemade thermometers, I'll put it that way. And so we're live at Red McCombs Toyota, I-10, UTSA Boulevard, right? And we're here to, with our annual thank you to them for sponsoring our wonderful segments. We can get all of our supplies and gear and everything that we need to make the thermometers. We're gonna get into it more in a second. I wanna talk weather really quickly. And we had our high temperature of 96 today. And right now we're just a few degrees shy of that, down to 93 officially in town, still 97 in Castroville. You look at the wind, doesn't help us much. Uh, it's basically calm out there. Every once in a while you get about a five mile per hour breeze. It's going to be calm tonight. Nice consolation, those dew points drop down into the 50s and 40s. So that was good to see. Now take this full screen. Look at this big view of our dew point trend. It's up and down a little bit. Looks like a roller coaster this weekend. Our dew points will be up in the 60s again. Very noticeable humidity. Weak cool front hits on Monday, that drops that humidity down. So early next week, we're talking dew points in the 40s, that's going to give us a little hint, a little appetizer of fall, a little taste of fall, at least in the morning hours. So that's what, if you ask me, I'm looking forward to. I know the folks around here have been asking when we're gonna have the cooler weather. We're talking low 60s for mornings by next week, the middle part of next week. All right, let's talk top tropics really quickly. And of course, we still have Cat 4 Fiona that's gonna brush close to Bermuda. Gaston staying out over the open ocean, a fish storm as we like to call it. And then we've got that 90% chance of development and that's down in the Caribbean. That's looking at the computer models, likely to go west northwestward and then take a turn into the Gulf of Mexico, central, eastern Gulf of Mexico. It's all up for grabs right now. It just We all need to monitor that and we'll keep you updated. As for this evening, clear sky, increasing humidity overnight, and temperatures gradually falling through the 80s, and by midnight we'll even be in the upper 70s, and start the day tomorrow at 72 with a high temperature of 99, a lot of sunshine. If that verifies, that would tie the record high for the day. New Braunfels, 
Seguin, Gonzalez, we are predicting 100 degrees. There will be some neighborhoods around town. Maybe your backyard could briefly hit 100 as well. This weekend, we trim back a little bit, mid-90s, but higher humidity. Then that weak cool front on Monday brings us closer to 90 for highs most of next week, but very low humidity, much drier air in place, and that'll mean some mornings down in the lower 60s, and I think even some upper 50s in some locations. You know I love that sound. That means one thing. Blake, come on in hey, here. Blake yeah. George, GM hey. here of Red yeah. McCombs Toyota. God, well, how many times has this been now? Uh, Six? Seven, I believe. Seven? I think it's seven. Well, thank yeah, you for I being so. a part of this for us to help us make Absolutely. Hold on, the reveal. Oh, yeah. Nice. Lovely thermometers. <laughs> so thank you so much. So, I mean, we could talk thermometers all day. We're at a car dealership. People drive by them. Lots are empty. What's the latest situation? Well, it looks like the supply will um, increase a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is more of an issue with uh, chips, yeah. parts, so on and so forth. Um, all the forecasts point to it increasingly getting better and mm -hmm. better as we start moving through. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, um, not long, we'll be, yeah. we'll be in great shape. And you've been selling cars. I mean, people can sell. They can come in and order a car. That's the yeah. best thing I can tell you to do. Come in and order what you want. You have before the end of the year, if not sooner. Um, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we can get it to you in a couple of weeks. Um, we'll work hard for you and try to get whatever we can. Well, and awesome. don't forget the new Sequoia is coming out too. Oh, there we go. Made yeah. in town too. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Made in Santa. It's like this uh, Tundra. When I look at this, all I can think of is tailgate. <laughs> Let's get the burgers going, right? Get the <laughs> beverage of choice going, and it is. Thermometer Thursday, so we need a winner. <laughs> Castillo family, where are you? They were coming in for maintenance and they knew we were here and they so badly wanted. So do you have a boot thermometer? <laughs> I've got the Thank boot you. thermometer for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Kristen, do you want to take it? Here you go. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I see that smile. I see it there. Well, congratulations. And by the way, ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. And, you know, the computer picks someone. But when I'm here, we pick somebody in person. And they came in. Do you have it? I was like, maybe we do. And we can make it happen. All right, Blake. Thanks right. again, man. Thank you, Adam. Yes, appreciate great, it. Great partnership. The man that gets all of our supplies and helps them keep it going. The giveaways and even for the uh, charities as well. All right, let's get tailgate season underway now and get rid of this heat. A hint of fall, middle of next week. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> I could tell awesome. you had tailgate fever when you were sitting on the back, sitting on the back of that Tundra. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he's already envisioning what he could do with it. that vehicle. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. It's Thursday, September 22nd. A San Antonio man behind bars after he was caught sending disturbing text messages and photos to someone he thought was a 15-year-old girl. 55-year-old Ernest Johnson arrested at his work today. The San Antonio Police Department's Human Exploitation Unit says he was actually chatting with one of their undercover officers when this happened back on September 1st. Detectives were able to figure out where he works. They arrested him and charged him with online solicitation of a minor. Big Give officially begins this evening at 6 o'clock. It is an opportunity for companies and individuals to donate their favorite charity. Now, since it began back in 2014, the 24 hours of the Big Give has raised over $35 million, helping over 1,000 nonprofits. Two big name retailers hoping to help your wallet with early holiday deals. Walmart and Target both announced they will start holiday deals the first week of October, an entire month early for Walmart. Next month also when Target plans to start price matching and hiring more than 100,000 seasonal workers, Walmart will hire 40,000 people. So whether you're looking for a deal or a dollar, never too early to start thinking about the holidays. This was in February of last year when Jude, who has autism, made his father realize that his youngest son could basically hear anything and then figure out how to play it immediately. Jude was born with low oxygen levels and had to have heart surgery as a baby to repair a hole. He even needed a feeding tube in his stomach until he was eight. Now at 11 years old, Jude is all over YouTube. He plays weddings. He's the lead keyboardist at their church in Aurora. Yeah, it's, it's just God and all. It's a miracle.
You know, you could just call them the goat of goats. <laughs> a job well done for a herd of goats in Chicago. They just wrapped up a summer season spent chowing down on overgrown vegetation at O'Hare International Airport. The ninth year that goats and other grazing animals have worked to help clear away scrub vegetation around the airport. It is part of an eco-friendly program to keep the airfield safe and maintained. The animals will now head to warmer areas as fall weather approaches. What must that be like? Electronic <laughs> Arts has announced that Ted Lasso and his football club AFC Richmond will appear in FIFA 23. The Apple TV Plus show has become a worldwide hit. With their addition to FIFA, fans can play as the Greyhounds. Yeah, they can coach players like Jamie Tarr, Danny Rojas, Roy Kent, Isaac McAdoo, Sam Obisanya. That's right. I watched the show. <laughs> or you can just hire Ted Lasso or Coach Beard to do it. Nelson Road, the club's home stadium, also makes an appearance in the game. FIFA 23 comes out September 30th. I, I might actually buy it just for the Ted Lasso stuff. the next season of the show.